everybody, welcome back to D's Nerds. I'm Michelle and today we are going to be reviewing the Star Wars Aftermath Trilogy. All right, before we get started today, I just wanna remind you that if you like this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And then if you're interested in our content, please subscribe and then ring that bell for notifications whenever we post a new video. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at D's Nerds. So you'll notice that I only actually have physical copies of two of these three books because I actually read the first one on Kindle that I borrowed from my library and then picked these up at an Amazon sale. The first book is just called Aftermath and it looks pretty much just like these on the front except the color is blue instead of yellow and orange. The second book is Aftermath Life Death. Life Death, not Life Death. The last one is Empire's End and these are all by Chuck Wendig. So what I've noticed about this series reading a little bit online is that it seems to be really divisive in that people either love it or they hate it and having read them all now I can see why that might be the case and I'll tell you why. In the first book you're introduced to all of our characters which is a lot of characters. The bounty hunter Jazamari which is a Z she's a Zabraki which is the same race that Darth Maul is. Nora Wexley and her son Timon. And if that name is, sounds familiar to you, it's because he becomes Snap Wexley later. Timon's droid, Mr. Bones. We have an Imperial deserter named Sinjir. Wedge Antilles, who we do recognize, his story is kind of on the side a little bit in this one, but he does become a pretty significant character as these go on. And John Burrell is another one that his story is a little bit more secondary but does come to play a bigger part. So a lot of characters and the thing is that pretty much all of these characters at the beginning are separate. So basically you're jumping back and forth from chapter to chapter to all these different characters that you don't know how any of these things fit together except for the fact that they're all happening on the same planet. They are on kind of an outlying planet and so there's not a lot of main characters that you remember from the series in this first book. You do get a peek at a couple of them, but really just a very small peek. So basically you spend that whole first book building this group. Eventually, and slowly as the book goes along, the stories start to connect to one another until eventually they're all connected, but you have to be so patient. And it's exhausting a little bit to go through that many different storylines and wait to see how things pan out. Because not only are you getting those characters who are our hero characters, you're also getting some of the leftover Imperial characters whose bad guy stories we're following as well. So we kind of know who we're fighting against. So with all those storylines, sometimes it just kind of feels like your head is overdoing it. The other thing is every few chapters they did what what was called an interlude chapter and it would take place on some other planet with some other characters. Sometimes they were characters we knew and sometimes they were characters that had nothing to do with anything as far as I was concerned. It mostly felt like those interlude chapters just interrupted the flow of the story and gave me things to think about that I really didn't need to know. Looking back at it, probably some of those chapters I could have just skipped over. There were a few that were significant and interesting and actually had some bearing on something elsewhere, but for the most part they just felt like they disrupted the story. That being said, the characters are really fun and really diverse and really interesting. We have characters of different races, different sexualities. We have droids, we have deserters, we have bounty hunters. I mean, we have everything. So there's tons going on, which makes, I think, the group that ends up getting built a particularly interesting group versus just everyone just having been a simple you know, former rebel. And we also have quite a range of ages as well, which is nice. The first book is definitely the weakest of the three. If I were going to say my, my order of favorites, I would say that the first one is my least favorite. The second one was my most favorite of the three. And then this one is in the middle. So this is the third book. And that was kind of my middle one. Once you get to the second book, you start to get some characters that you actually recognize. Leia and Han, starts to play a role. You see a lot of Mon Mothma, just more characters familiar to you from the original stories. Because again, this does take place right after Return of the Jedi. So just very shortly after, within a couple of months after. So you do actually start seeing some of the aftermath of the events of those with characters that you do recognize. Also in these books, and I don't think this is a spoiler, you find out that Leia is pregnant with Ben. So she has been solo in the course of these books. And so you get to see a bit of her and Han as new parents, which is kind of, which is kind of cool. But overall, I would give this trilogy four stars. They had some problems for me that just kind of didn't work in, in spots. Like I said, that first book is so slow building your characters together. It's worth it. The payoff is great, but trying to keep up with that many different storylines in a book that is really not all that long, all things considered, these are all under 500 pages. So trying to keep up with, I don't know, six or seven storylines over the course of a 500 page book, it just feels like a lot. Then those interlude chapters, like I said, they just kind of ruined it for me in parts. I was like, I was in the story and I was ready to go and, and something was happening and then all of a sudden it was like, 
interlude and just came to like a full stop. So that was not my favorite thing. But I definitely think they're worth a read, especially if you are always curious about what happened immediately after Return of the Jedi. I mean, we see they're you know, celebrating with the Ewoks and everything at the end of Return of the Jedi, but then we kind of don't know much of anything for all that long time until we pick up with The Force Awakens. So these are a great starting point, I think, if you're interested in reading any of the Star Wars canon novels. And these are canon novels, by the way. And like I said, they're very divisive. But if you read the first one and you feel unsure about it, the second and third one make it worth it. So just be patient with it unless you just absolutely despise it. I think the characters are worth it. I think the storyline is worth it. I think especially in the second book, the storyline was the payoff from the end of the first one was phenomenal. So the second book is definitely great. You get to spend some time on the wiki planet. That is my review of the Aftermath Trilogy. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell for notifications whenever we post a new video. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at DSNerds, and I'll see you again soon. I'm Michelle. Bye, everybody.